Scorpio human cyborg relations. Hey Star Wars fans, Happy Trooper here with another fun project. The Empire has captured a rebel droid containing plans for 3D printing and painting a natural metal finish on a C-3PO head. Some off-the-shelf electronics will be used to illuminate C-3PO's eyes and give him a voice. We're doomed. This prop can be used as a display piece, a costume accessory, or it can be the beginning of printing a full-size protocol droid. Even if you aren't a Star Wars fan, this video may help you with finishing and painting 3D printed objects. The goal of this build was to construct a relatively screen accurate C-3PO head, utilizing tools and materials that can be used in a homework area. The processes used in this video may seem exhaustive, but they should help you produce fairly decent results at home. Please feel free to change any of the methods and materials during your build. For some, perhaps printing in gold filament is adequate, or simply using a can of gold spray paint. Do what you are comfortable with and what fits your budget. Here are the tools and materials that I used during this build. A 3D printer, one part filler putty, sandpaper from 120 to 2000 grit, filler primer spray, white gloss spray paint and clear gloss spray enamel, rubbing compound, an airbrush to spray chrome lacquer, acrylic yellow and red tint, and acrylic clear gloss. If you do not have an airbrush, gold spray paint can be used. A rotary tool was used to trim out C-3PO's eye lenses from a fluorescent light cover. And two number 632 one inch round head machine screws. A list of all products and materials can be found in the description below. Thanks to Jesse M, C-3PO's STL files are available for free on Thingiverse.com. Depending on the size of your print bed, you may need to split the model into a size that you can work with. MeshMixer is one of many free pieces of software that can split STL files for you. I'm using a CR10S printer with Inland PLA Plus in black, printing at 210 degrees. I used Cura software to generate my G-code for printing. The front and rear head parts and neck were printed at 0.2 mm layer height, while the smaller detail parts were printed at 0.1 mm layer height. Jesse M's files include eye cups that can be used to make illuminated eyes by using TK409's plans that call for using rice lights. I chose to go a different route with illuminated eyes. I found some underwater lights on Amazon.com that will fit inside C-3PO's eye cavities. Because of this change, some modifications were needed on the eye pieces. I sliced Jesse M's eye cups to grids only and created a faux eye tube that sits flush against the underwater lights. The reason I chose to go this route was because the lights are already fabricated and the lights have a remote control. Ten lights come in a pack, so I will have lots of extras with batteries. The STL files for Jesse M's sliced grid and modified eye tubes are available in the description below. While you are waiting for all those headpieces to print, you can get started on the lenses. I purchased a sheet of fluorescent light cover for $10. Much of it will not be used, but at least you'll have a lot to practice on. Print out the eye templates from the description below and cut them out. Trim a piece off the light cover so that it is easier to work with. Tape the templates on the light cover and begin drilling out the center eye tube holes. A slow drill speed is recommended. Use a rotary tool cutting bit to hollow out the eye tube holes. Next, trace around the eye lens templates using a rotary tool cutting bit. It doesn't have to be exact. The light cover sands very easily. Get as close as you can to create a circle, and then use 120 grit sandpaper to grind down the edges. Improvise to sand out the middle of the eye tube holes. Sand the two main head pieces and neck with 220 grit sandpaper to knock the ridges down. If you have very rough areas, use 120 grit to grind it down. After sanding, fill in any significant gaps with filler putty. Bondo is usually my go-to, but I also had success with wood filler putty. If you lay the putty on thick, sand the dried putty down with 220, and then switch over to 400 grit to finish off the filler and the head itself. 400 grit will give the primer something to bite into in the next step. I printed C-3PO's head horn in two halves and secured them with SCI grip number 16 adhesive. Once it had dried, I gave a test fit on the face piece.
Sanding twigs were used to file down ridges. I filled in any gaps with Bondo putty and sanded off the excess. You can use the two neck bolts to secure the front and rear head pieces by using two number 632 one inch round head machine screws. On the backs of the 3D printed neck bolts, use a slow drill speed and gradually build the bit size to about a quarter inch bit, enough so that the number 632 screw head fits in. I use some plastic bonder epoxy to secure the screw heads into the rear of the neck bolts. This JB Weld said that it could secure metal to plastic. It also has a quick curing time of 30 minutes. Here is a quick overview of the paints that will be applied in this step of the project. A primer coat to fill in minor gaps and scratches on the 3D printed object and to help with adhesion for the next layer. A gloss white enamel coat to provide the necessary reflective background color for the chrome paint. A gloss clear enamel coat to protect the gloss white and to allow us to wet sand and polish to get a mirror smooth finish for the chrome paint. A chrome lacquer layer to help provide a metallic and semi-reflective appearance. A yellow and red acrylic tint to give it a gold metallized appearance. And a clear gloss acrylic coat to protect everything underneath. Stage your 3D printed objects in a well-ventilated area. Use a respirator and spray a light coat of filler primer. Don't worry about covering the entire object with primer just yet. Wait about 5 minutes and then hit it with another coat. Wait another 5 minutes and then hit it with the last coat. Don't worry if it's not smooth. This will be wet sanded to smooth out any imperfections. If you see any major gaps after applying the filler, fill them with putty, sand the putty down with 400 grit, and hit it with some more primer. Don't worry if your primer isn't smooth while spraying. The filler primer that I used said that it was safe to sand after 2-4 to four hours. I wet sanded the primer with 400 grit sandpaper. This smoothed out any texture, but also left filler in the crevices. Next, I hit all of the objects with gloss white spray paint. Spray a light mist coat to cover about 60% of the object. Don't worry about covering it. Wait 5-10 to 10 minutes and then spray a second, heavier coat. Try to get about 80% coverage. Wait another 10 minutes and then spray a final wet coat. Try to avoid runs and drips. Keep the can moving at all times and use the suggested spray distance. If this is your first time spray painting, Get an extra can and practice on another object so that you can lay down a nice smooth coat. If you do have orange peel or runs, don't despair. Wet sand the imperfections out with 600 grit sandpaper, and then hit the object again with more glossy white spray. Don't move on until you have a decent white gloss coat. I let these objects cure for over 48 hours. Next, hit the items with some gloss clear spray enamel. Following the same steps as previous sprays, I sprayed a light first coat, waited 5 minutes, and then sprayed a second wetter coat, followed by a third wet coat. I had a fairly smooth gloss coat after this exercise. It wasn't mirror smooth, but smooth enough. We'll fix that in the next step. After the gloss enamel spray has cured for 24 or more hours, fill a bowl with some water and add some dishwashing soap. This will help with lubrication and water retention while wet sanding. A spray bottle is also helpful. Soak some 1000 grit in the soapy water and spray the headpiece with water. Lightly sand in a back and forth motion. You will feel rough areas as you go over the object. Those are areas that need to be brought down. After you are satisfied, repeat the same process with 1500 grit sandpaper. Finally, finish up with 2000 grit sandpaper. At the end of this exercise, you will lose your nice gloss luster, but don't worry, it will be restored in the next step. Use a terry cloth polishing pad and apply some rubbing compound. Begin polishing the object. It will take time and effort. If you see some rough areas, you may need to step back and wet sand again. Do not skip any grits if you wet sand. 
Finish up with the compound. Clean up any excess compound with a microfiber cloth. Afterwards, you should have a nice mirror-like finish. Before moving on, I have only one piece of advice. Be patient, don't rush, wait for your paint layers to cure. Fix mistakes if you see them, even if it sets you back a few days. When working with a metal finish, what is under your metallic paint is critical. It must be flawless. With patience, you can produce a near-flawless undercoat to prep for the metal finish. Metal finishes do not hide imperfections, they amplify them. While using a respirator, I sprayed spastics from my Posh H single action airbrush at about 18 psi. It went on easily. I sprayed a light first coat on all pieces and then hit them again with another pass to cover all areas. I used a microfiber towel to lightly remove excess chrome paint particles. You don't really need to buff it. The gloss white is very smooth and the chrome is very light. So you could risk removing the paint if you buff too hard, especially around the edges. A simple wipe was enough to reveal the nice finish. I mixed five parts of Tamiya Clear Yellow Acrylic with one part Tamiya Clear Red Acrylic and thinned the two colors with Tamiya Acrylic Thinner to the consistency of milk. The mixture was sprayed at 18 psi and it took about six passes with the airbrush to build up a gold tint. I did try using Tamiya Clear Yellow by itself but it was a little too yellow for my liking. It almost looked greenish in some light. You may need to experiment with the paint mixture to get the tint that you like. I used All Clad Clear Aqua Gloss as a top coat. This will protect that beautiful paint job that you just laid down and it will make it nice and glossy. The Aqua Gloss took some practice. The instructions say to lay it down in light layers, but I couldn't get a good level coat. It came out pebbly. I practiced on some PVC pipe and other scrap plastic objects. What worked best for me was to lay it on at 18 psi without thinning it and spraying about 2 or 3 inches away producing a heavy coat. It took practice to avoid runs and drips. It is forgiving. If you see a huge drop build up while it's still wet, you should be able to touch the drip with the end of a paper towel to dab it up without affecting the finish. It will level out after time. I'm very pleased with this clear coat. It looks great and didn't affect any layers beneath it. Once you learn how to lay it on, it's great stuff. Some of the reflective quality will be lost after applying the tint and clear coat. This is unavoidable. I use some artist's watercolor to give the head a little bit of weathering. Mix some black and a tad of burnt umber in some water with a drop of dish soap. Apply the mixture in recessed areas and then wipe off lightly with a damp paper towel. The paint, simulating grime, should remain. To seal the weathering, you can spray the head with another gloss clear coat. Place the grids into the eye cavities and carefully secure it with adhesive. Try to avoid adhesive dripping through the front of the headpiece and ruining your paint job. Next, secure the faux eye tube to the translucent lens using some clear parts glue. Place the translucent lens into the eye cavity and secure with some more clear parts glue. CA glue is not recommended as it will cause the clear lens to fog. Wrap around 2-3 rotations of friction tape around the underwater lights and place them in the eye socket. Do not force it if it is too snug, you could risk splitting the 3D printed face. I used E6000 adhesive to secure the rear head detail to the back of the head. Align the front and rear head pieces together and secure with the neck bolt. Carefully thread the bolt through the 3D printed layers and finally through the neck piece. You can use a nut to keep it in place. Last, secure the top horn. Download C3PO sound files from the link in the description below. The following procedures are for iPhone users. Create a playlist in iTunes for your C3PO sound files. Sync this playlist to your iPhone. Download the free soundboard app from the App Store. After the app has been installed, click the plus icon and choose Select from Music. Find your C3PO playlist and click the plus button to add the files to the soundboard. Ensure your iPhone is not on silent mode. 
you should now be able to play C-3PO sounds through the app. If this will be used as a static display, simply place C-3PO's head on top of a Bluetooth speaker. If this will be used as a mobile prop while trooping, you may want to rig up some kind of Velcro strap mechanism to secure a Bluetooth speaker or mobile phone into the head. Sir, if you'll not be needing me, I'll close down for a while. Help a sand trooper out and give me a like. Or better yet, click the subscription button below.